Childhood of Jesus, Chapter 207 The Lord to the End of Creation After the evening meal, Joseph blessed all the guests, and the little child also blessed them, and said, Now all of you go to your rest, and do not be afraid if during the night a little storm will thrust against our house, for no one will be harmed in the least. Remember, he who here dwells among you is also a lord of the storms. After these words, which aroused concern for the ship amongst the ship's company of Cyrenius, a sailor asserted, This child is a regular prophet, for he foretells serious trouble. Therefore we should immediately go to where the ship of Cyrenius is loosely tied, pull it in to the shore as close as possible, and then make it fast. Here Jonathan arose and stated, Do not worry. In the first place the Lord will surely know how to protect the ship. And in the second place I also have people at home who know more about making a ship fast than you, and will surely know how to make the governor's ship fast so you can be quite unconcerned along with me. These words put everyone at ease, and they retired. Mary promptly made a very soft and fresh bed for the little child, then laid him down and placed the little bed beside her sleeping couch. Now Mary and Eudokia usually slept together in one bed, as they did now, but Eudokia who was thoroughly afraid of the predicted storm, confessed to Mary, Mary, see, I have a strong fear of the without doubt approaching storm. How would it be if today we took the little child in the middle between us? Then we would surely be safe from every danger. And the little child, upon thus hearing Eudokia express her concern, smiled and said, Oh, Eudokia, sometimes you are right smart, but other times a real simpleton. Do you really suppose that I can only protect you when I am on your lap? Oh, there you are in great error. See, my arm is longer than you suppose, and if you were at the end of creation, I still would be able to protect you there as well as here. So just be calm and go to rest as usual, and tomorrow you will arise once more in good health. This put Eudokia at ease, and she promptly went to rest along with Mary. Chapter 208 Joseph puts a curse on the storm. Two hours later, when everyone was already at rest, a very powerful gale came, and thrust against the house so violently that the entire house shook. All the sleepers were awakened by this resounding blow, and since the gale continued to rage and was accompanied by, th by a thousand lightnings and the most intense thunder, all those who were present in Joseph's house began to quake and to quiver thereat. To the fury and raging of the gale there was also added the howling of a multitude of wild, rending animals, which added to the fear of the guests in Joseph's house. Everyone now began to press into the chamber where Joseph, Cyrenius and Jonathan were, and sought protection there. Hereupon Joseph arose, made a light, and consoled the faint-hearted as well as he could, and the same was done by the gigantic Jonathan and by Cyrenius. But since the storm constantly became more violent, the consoling of the three did not have much effect, and what especially caused the greatest fear of death among most of those present was that a few tigers, amid most unearthly howls, began to thrust their paws inside through the buried up windows. When the storm became too fierce even for Joseph, he became aroused and shouted at it, 
Be silent, you monster, in the name of him who dwells here, the Lord of Infinity, and henceforth never disturb those who need rest during the night. So be it. These words Joseph shouted with such force that all were more terrified thereat than at the raging gale. But the storm just would not cease, whereat Joseph became still more aroused and directed his threat at the storm with still greater force. But this also remained fruitless, and the gale mocked Joseph. Here Joseph became angry at the disobedient gale and put a curse on it. At this moment the little child awakened and said to James, who was present beside the little bed, James, go in to Joseph and tell him to recall his curse, for he does not know what he curses. Tomorrow he will understand the reason for this storm and discover its good purpose. In a few minutes it will come to an end anyhow. Thereupon James promptly went to Joseph and told him what the little child had instructed him to say. Here Joseph took heart and did what James told him and soon thereafter the storm subsided. The beasts dis dispersed, and every one in Joseph's house went back to rest. Chapter 209 The Reason for the Storm The following day Joseph arose very early as usual and apportioned the daily tasks to his four sons, whose first task it was to provide for a good breakfast and then to perform whatever duties needed to be done. After attending to this, he went outside to see what damage the storm might have caused during the night. And as he thus walked back and forth, he soon found a mass of gnawed off human bones, and found many places that were stained with human blood. This sight greatly surprised him, and he could not solve this riddle. And as he went onward, he also found a mass of dedges and small lances that were frequently stained with blood. At this he began to see matters in quite a different light, and slowly began to understand the beneficial reason for the gale and for the wild animals that were brought there because of it. Thereupon Joseph quickly went to his four sons, made this known to them, and told three of them to gather up the bones and the weapons. In an hour and a half a great heap of human bones was piled up beneath a tree, and a second heap of bloody weapons next to it. After breakfast Joseph led Sarenius and Jonathan outside and showed them the strange find of the morning. When Cyrenius beheld this, he struck his hands together above his head and declared, But in the name of the Almighty Lord, just what is that? From whence are these bones of the dead? From whence these weapons still dripping with fresh blood? Joseph, brother, friend, have you no idea as to the cause of this abomination? And Joseph answered, Friend and brother, those are either sea pirates or the assassins that pursued your ship. But let us first destroy all of that with fire, and then we will attempt to get to the bottom of the matter. Cyrenius was satisfied with this, and all his household servants were sent together in wood from all sides. And when toward noon a very large pile of wood had been stacked up in an open place, the bones as well as the weapons were laid on the great mound of wood and thus burned up.